Greetings and welcome to step 23 of our awakening in 30 steps. And congratulations for making it to the second milestone on our journey. The second milestone, of course, is the development of bodhicitta, the altruistic intention. It is the at the result of all the prior reflections since our first milestone of renunciation. All the journey that we've been taking on the last few steps have led to this milestone, the development of a very sincere wish to awaken for the benefit of others. Now, what I wanted to do today is just do a little check-in with you to see how your rehearsal and memorization of the steps have been going. And then I want to discuss the relationship between the first milestone and the second milestone. And then finally, I wanted to just set up the rest of the journey and how the second milestone of bodhicitta impacts what's coming down the pike. Okay, quick burst of espresso again. Let's go all the way back to the beginning. Are you ready? First contemplation was to clean and tidy or create a sacred space. And then we went into set up the workbench and make offerings. And then we went into sit down and adjust our posture and our motivation. Strong, good, clean motivation. There were three types of motivation. The, the genuine wish to be well, uh, the wish for liberation based on renunciation, and the uh, wish to awaken for the benefit of others based on bodhicitta. Then from motivation, we crossed the threshold and dissolved into emptiness and re-arose in our safe sanctuary, a visualized safe sanctuary. There we evoked the mentor and the jewel tree lineage. And then we uh, did the fifth preliminary, which is to um, the seven point mentor bonding process in order to cultivate virtue and eliminate vice. That seven steps were sub steps, began with admiring and then offering and then disclosing and then requesting or rejoicing and then requesting blessing and then requesting presence and then dedicating and then we completed the six preliminaries with our mandala offering therein lies the visualization practice then we moved into looking for a mentor and the, the qualities of the mentor and from there the qualities of the student and then we started our lam rim steps in earnest with the preciousness of human life. And then from preciousness of human life endowed with liberty and opportunity, we went into death. And death is imminent and certain. The time of death is uncertain. And all, the only thing that will ha matter at the time of death is our Dharma practice. From there, we went into refuge, not only the, the outer three refuges, but the inner three refuges. Do you remember those? So important. And from that bit of uh, sweet cream between the Oreo, we went into the uh, contemplations on karma, the four characteristics of karma. And then from there, we went into the six types of suffering. <laughs> six types of suffering not the three or the eight or the ten we went to the six and then from there we made it to the first milestone of our journey a nice bit of vista to look back on as we enjoyed and savored what is meant by renunciation evolutionary self-care to love this bit of matter and real estate so much that we are no longer willing to let ourselves suffer evolutionary self-care. Remember, it was also defined as definite emergence from the wheel, the hamster wheel of samsara. Then we began the altruistic uh, steps or contemplations, and we began with Master Sangha's uh, first point, which was to recognize all beings as kin and then from recognizing all beings as kin we went to remember their kindness and from there uh, the wish to repay their kindness then we switched over to shanti deva's list and we went into uh, equalizing self and other and from there contemplate the detriments of of self-preoccupation atmagraha and then into the contemplation of the benefits of altruism the elixir of love and then we went into Equalize, uh, exchanging self and other, the gravitational centrifugal force around which our entire being is oriented gets transplanted and the flow, uh, the flow of give and take is reversed. And there we had a nice little practice of giving and taking tonglen, 
where we take on the suffering of others grounded in a universal view and a sense of responsibility and then offered offered our love and our care and therein lies the establishment of today's post bodhicitta we have arrived at another platform a milestone in our journey and we can look back and savor the vista we have arrived by way of our contemplations in a very deep deep sense of altruism of universal responsibility of of feeling the affinity and affection with all different kinds of living beings past present and future and the, the genuine sense that they're suffering mired in the hamster wheel of their own hallucination and the wish then to wanting to help and save and support them but then also the humility that what can we possibly do and on the basis of that humility what can we possibly do even though we are absolutely oriented towards trying to do something the the establishment of then the determination the determination to awaken for the benefit of others that's where we are today congratulations it's phenomenal this is like in a snapshot in just five or six minutes a snapshot of the evolutionary steps of a mind migrating uh, consciously towards deeper and deeper empathy and deeper deeper recognition of our universal interconnectivity very very profound now the relationship between the first milestone and the second milestone should be clear it's very clear they're both motivational factors they're they're both a mind that is determined hell-bent if you will the first milestone is the recognition of our own suffering is so profound and then we and we love ourselves so much we are we all we will drive all our attention and our resources and our and our focus towards freeing ourselves towards liberation no more satisfied with the eight worldly winds of pleasure and pain and fame and game and this and that and all the beautiful attractive things of this life that are only temporary all that glitters isn't gold then we just fully commit to not leaving the life not leaving a job not leaving our wife or wife or husband or partner but abandoning the causes of the hamster wheel hallucinatory misery making machine and so what is the relationship between that and the present milestone well it is the inverse it is the determination after really recognizing the sheer amount and the volume and the vastness of suffering of living beings and yet feeling so intimate with them and so inextricably bound to them and so and so tied to them in dependence on them in reliance on them like children and like parents and like kin not wishing even a single one of them to suffer and also recognizing the wisdom of no escape samsara is nirvana this this world is all there is and we are forever bound to each other so let's upgrade let's optimize let's improve the situation not just for ourselves but for all beings because we are inextricably connected with all beings and so their survival their happiness uh, their well-being and their ultimate liberation is our paramount paramount concern and so from from that standpoint what bodhicitta is is the inverse expression of self-care evolutionary self-care is now care and concern for others uh, based on the same kind of very deep analytic work that discovered that everybody is suffering and that no one gets a free hall pass and we're all bound so here we are <clears throat> We have now, based on this cadence, this vinyasa sequence of contemplations, arrived at the second milestone, the establishment of a very strong determination to be free, not just for ourselves, but to be free for the benefit of others. Now, what is the impact that this is going to have on the next few steps? Well, this is the main motivation. It's called aspirational bodhicitta and it means that it's about an intention well what about the action those happen to be the next steps down the road so I'll be taking you through what are called the bodhisattva activities the six perfections the kinds of ways that we are going to uh, sculpt the landscape of our interactions with others in order to create a Buddhaverse, a more harmonious, safe interconnectivity or interdependence based on the fundamental understanding that it's empty so that it can be transformed. It's like clay. 
our social interactions and societies and culture and the planet is plastic, it's clay, it can be molded. And it has been, since beginningless time, been molded mostly by afflictions and blindness and hallucination. What if it were transformed because there was much more clarity, much more compassion, much more kindness, much more uh, altruistic intention? So therein lies where we're going for the remainder of the journey, the next few steps. It's only a few now, you're almost there. What we'll be doing is on the basis of this very strong determination to awaken for the benefit of others, we will learn how to actually intervene and actually work with others based on a very profound training called the Six Perfections of the Altruist. Okay, now one little reflection to revisit the uh, experiment that we're on since we're using social media and Instagram as this kind of media purview, this kind of vista, this kind of arena, this um, portal, if you will, for our interaction. I've been thinking that possibly even my 12 to 15 minute posts are too long. <laughs> In having a discussion with Emily, she's like, no, no, you, you have to keep it to two or three minutes. And it, it forced me into this little, um, little dilemma. Was I going to reduce the time of the post so that it would fit into one or two minutes, so that it would accommodate the short attention spans that our culture is growing into uh, ever more uh, and an ever more increasing a trend towards smaller and smaller snippets because we have less and less attention span and we might like to just gobble up nice nuggets and then move on to the next and gobble a nice nugget and move on to the next and gobble a nice nugget and move on to the next. Was Am I going to do that? And I already, or I've already expressed to you that this is an experiment. I'm willing to try things. I normally teach one and a half, two, two and a half, three hours and to just go down to 10 minutes and try to offer something that actually has, in my estimation, value, I, don't, I actually don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I could translate something into one or two minutes, but really the reflection for me is what would be the motivation? Is it so that more people uh, would um, look at the post and, and reflect on the post if I decreased it to two minutes. And that, that to me, isn't a very good motivation. And, cer and also, certainly, it's not, it's not my conscious intention or wish to placate, accommodate, and reinforce our ever-decreasing intention. So if you've maintained your interest along this way and uh, have found some benefit with clips uh, 10 to 15 minutes, let me know. If you've decreased interest, uh, let me know what you think about shorter clips. And But more importantly, I'm asking you for, for you, I'm asking for your feedback in the consideration of our culture and our decreased capacity to sustain our attention. What is truly menef beneficial? Should we, should, we, um, should we spoon feed and accommodate smaller snippets? Or would that have maximal impact? Or would that be, in a way, just reinforcing the trend uh, towards ever decreasing uh, attention spans? So that's a little um, request. Perhaps if you are still on the ride and you have thoughts about that, tag us, uh, uh, gradual path hashtag us, or tag me personally. I'm, I'm very, very interested. Okay, step 23 of our Awakening in 30 Steps, the second milestone of bodhicitta, the development, strong determination for the wish to awaken for the benefit of others. Thank you so much. All best wishes.